Now, with the onset of summer season comes in the holiday season, and thus comes in a boost for players in the travel and tourism industry. What are the players in the holiday travel and tourism space expecting this time around? We will get a management view from Kavinder Singh. He is the managing director and chief executive officer at Mahindra Holidays and Resorts. Um, Mr. Singh, uh, wish you a very good morning and thank you very much for having joined us uh, on Bloomberg Quint. Um, you know, Q4 is usually the strongest quarter for you. So if you could tell us how membership additions have been in the Jan to March period and also what are forward bookings looking like ahead of the summer holidays? I think uh, uh, you have a point. Uh, normally Q4 is a heavy quarter for us and uh, I, I must say that we are seeing uh, momentum in line with what has been the trend so far. And uh, for obvious reasons, because at this time people start planning for their vacations in April, May, June. And let me give you a very interesting uh, you know, trend ahead. Uh, when we look at occupancies ahead, uh, we see April, May, June occupancies last year we were at about 89%. And we are believing that we would probably you know, beat that number or we'll be around that. And interestingly, you know, we also see that in April, May, even though they are summer months, even in our Rajasthan resorts, our occupancies are upwards of 80% as we see ahead. So people are making plans, people are looking forward to get out of their uh, homes definitely during the summer vacations. And as I see it, this, this year is going to be no different than the previous years. And we are looking for uh, definitely much higher occupancies in the coming times. Uh, sir, but uh, is there any sort of a, a number or at least, um, you know, a growth uh, percentage that you can share with respect to the uh, kind of new member additions that we have seen? Because in the third quarter, uh, they remained a little on the softer side. Yeah, but if you notice in the third quarter itself, our uh, resort revenues grew by about 11%. So our resort revenues, our annual fee revenues, they are moving in the li in line with our past trends. Yes, we had some amount of dip in the member additions, and I mentioned already that we are looking at acquiring members who are willing to pay higher down payment, and that is a correction that we had undertaken, and we are well past that correction, and we believe that this focus on taking members with higher down payments will help us in getting higher member lifetime value over the 25 years they spend at our uh, resorts, seven nights a, a year. And you can see that in the last year, we had just about 200 crores uh, cash on hand or cash and cash equivalents. And this number has swelled to about 411 crores. So the focus on getting our balance sheet strengthened in terms of cash position and in terms of attracting the right quality of members is something that we are continuing to look ahead. But as I told you that this quarter, quarter four, is a heavier quarter and it is not going to be any different from the previous quarters that we have seen in the past in quarter four. So, so is it fair to assume that the kind of turnaround that we had seen at your international subsidiary HCR um, would, uh, you know, th that's something that we would see in the fourth quarter as well, especially given that the second half is uh, a stronger uh, half for HCR as well? So HCR, uh, as we have mentioned to you, that uh, it turned profitable uh, in the last uh, results that we declared. And we believe that the second quarter of HCR is going to be better. And uh, as far as HCR's performance is concerned, please note that there are two, three things that are working in their favors. Uh, favor. One is, of course, the uh, operational improvements that the team has done over there, which led to the improvement in performance. But remember one thing that in the, in the Finnish operations, there is a lot of Russian uh, travel that happens into the Finland resorts. As you know, Russia and Finland are neighbors. And the Russian travel is picking up. As you can see that the oil prices have moved up. So Russian travel is picking up in Finland. And Finnish economy itself has grown by about 25 to 3%, which is a big uh, achievement considering the fact that earlier they were growing at about half a percent or 1% and there were times that they were declining. So the economy growth, the fact that the Russian tourists are coming and the fact that there are operational improvements that the Holiday Club Resorts team has done. And, you know, in Jan, Feb, March, as you know, that the uh, significant amount of resort uptake happens uh, for seeing the Northern Lights. Uh, that's something that trend is being maintained, as I hear from my Finnish team. And therefore, we believe that this quarter is going to be better than what it has been in the past.
All right. Uh, so if we talk a little uh, longer term, you know, over the next couple of years, say by 2020, uh, what are the kind of new membership additions that you expect to see? And, uh, you know, fair to assume that some of these incremental members would come from uh, further penetration into the tier two and tier three cities? Yeah, so uh, the way we look at uh, our business, we believe that uh, the holidaying habits and leisure travel uh, amongst Indian families is on the rise. I mean, you, we are seeing these indicators all around, whether it is the low cost airlines growth numbers that you see and the, 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 the travel per se is on the rise. And therefore, we believe that in our business, it is extremely important to be able to tap into the households who would want to experience India and international destinations that we bring them. Uh, so we are noticing that there are about 12 to 13 million households which own car today. And any prospective car buyer is, is, is a potential target for us. And we have just about 230,000 members. So we believe that there is easily five to 10 times potential of growing this business. So we do not plan for just two years ahead. If you notice our product is 25 years. So as we sell today our memberships, we are giving commitment to give magical moments to our members for next 25 years. So as we sell memberships today, we are selling for giving them the magical experiences till 2043. So if this is the kind of commitment we have, we are not uh, focusing on what we will be in 2020. We are definitely focusing on how many resorts we will have. And I must tell you at this point of time, we have fairly aggressive plans on resort expansion. We have already committed about 600 crores to about bringing 600 units, out of which already Naldera is in with about 115 units. Naldera is a 50th resort that we opened and this is near Shimla. So our aim is to grow our resorts, uh, bouquet of resorts, including new destinations, which will help us to un ensure that we are able to tap into this opportunity that I was talking about, 13 million potential households who could be uh, looking at our membership in time to come. Sure. And um, so I just wanted to understand how big is a threat of something like an uh, Airbnb for timeshare or vacation ownership? So uh, we do discuss this within the timeshare industry as to this phenomenon of Airbnb, how it will change the travel habits. Uh, what we are noticing that Airbnb is also now focusing on experiences and they believe that uh, when you travel on Airbnb, you have to be like a local. But the biggest difficulty they are finding, including their thrust on experiences, is that they are not able to create an ecosystem of experiences which we have been able to build. If you look at timeshare industry, you know, through the exchange network, our members can go into the RCI resorts, 4,000 resorts around the world. And we have 53 resorts anyway. And if I were to add the Finnish resorts, that company uh, holiday club that we were talking about, we have another 32 resorts in Finland, Sweden and Spain. So the timeshare concept, the concept that Club Mahindra uh, is driving is about family vacations and creating magical moments and getting experiences which are not available in any, uh, in fact, it cannot be made available in any homestay. So we believe that our proposition is sound. It is based on experiences and the experiential ecosystem that we are trying to create, including travel in cruises, cottages, and various kind of unique experiences like staying in floating cottages. These are the things that people will come, will continue to come to us. And these are the experiences which we own. These are the experiences which we are able to aggregate. And this is something that Airbnb is probably not focused on. Their focus is on homestays and therefore they will probably grow their business in that segment. But when it comes to experiences, I think people, particularly with families looking to vacation, will definitely have to look at our business model of timeshares. And we believe that we definitely create magical moments for families when they come to vacation at our resorts.